Huh. And so, probably shouldn't say the numbers, but there are very few people in, are very few, there were very few folks in the hardware department. And uh, having been on a lot of hardware projects, I know how many people it takes, and we were probably understaffed by like a hundred times what we needed to do, like all the projects that um, we were dreaming up. Made lots of really cool hardware, um, and actually some of that, um, a few of us that got fired recently were able to pull that out, and we've spun it off in our own company. Hmm. It sounds like they're almost deliberately not hiring hardware people to phase it out. Do you think they wanted to get rid of hardware? That seems interesting. I have no definitive proof on that, um, but uh, they they pretty much killed off our project that we were working on. So, you know, their press release didn't jive with, you know, ah. no projects. I guess it was canceled by proxy of um, none of us being there. <laughs> <laughs> the project's alive, but no one can do it. Yeah, so there's there was five of us working on this particular project, and all of us were um, canned the same day. Um, mm. The things that do work really good in Valve that um, definitely going to bring forward into our new company is that the idea of the flat um, structure works on a small scale. So where it really, really worked well was in our group where we had, um, you know, a handful of people like it. it their structure probably works really well with 20 people or so. Um, breaks down terribly when you start looking at a company of like 300 people. Uh. Um, communication was a problem. That's where management, like if I had anything to do differently again, like I would make sure there was a layer of management in there that could actually do the communication. Like one of my biggest struggles around there was just trying to do outreach to the company because there's all these resources around that were idling doing other things that maybe they could come help us but there mm -hmm. was no way to reach them at all. Um, oh, okay. When I complained about this, one of the folks, this I find this hilarious and this is really drinking the Kool-Aid, uh, he said that if communication was important in Valve it would have evolved a long time ago, <laughs> which is just insanity. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then they have this bonus structure in there that makes it um, where you can get bonuses. Like if you work on a very prestigious, um, high-profile project, you can get bonuses that are more than your wages. Hmm. So everyone is trying to work on projects that are like really like visible and like, look at me, I'm making all these uh, great improvements to the, the latest and greatest video game and then it's impossible to pull those people away to work on something risky like augmented reality because you yeah, know it's not a sure it's, thing yeah they, they only want to work on the sure thing so that was a frustration so our team you know we were starved for resources and we couldn't hire them we we had a machine shop that um, had millions of dollars worth of equipment in it and we couldn't hire a machinist for for forty thousand dollars a year to just sit there and machine parts for us because they were just too worried that, you know, bringing this machinist in would, you know, pollute their precious culture. Oh. Anyway, now I'm sounding bitter, and I am. I'm really, really bitter because they promised me the world and then backstabbed me. But um, right. I wonder if it's possible in your new company, and you're talking about having that horizontal system. Do you think it's possible to have a system where everyone's completely equal and there's just trading of, you know, collaboration? I'll help you if you help me. That's kind of how you described it last time. The ideal of Valve, without somebody, you know, kind of ending up on a maybe because they're senior or maybe like you said they've worked on you know, projects that are more successful, kind of ending up almost being a manager by default. I think that would be very difficult in a larger organization. I really. What I learned from Valve is I don't think it works. I think that um, you give people complete latitude uh, with no checks and balances. There's, it's just human nature. They're going to try to um, minimize the work that they have to do and maximize the control that they have. Um, Valve was really good at hiring uh, lead guitarists, we would always say. <laughs> like, you're, like all yes. of us hardware folks, we, we went out and got like the best makers and creators and then we were all lead guitarists but we didn't we didn't have like the person that would just sit there and assemble things for us so you know we're we all a minion 
Yeah, yeah. So like even getting like a, a, a tech for around the, the lab was almost impossible. So yeah. Hmm. So that's where I think a layer of management would really, really help um, organizations like that because at least you have somewhere to go to. Like my frustrations and probably led to my um, dismissal is because I was getting more and more bitter about and complaining to people that I thought were senior in the company that we can't hire anyone or we uh, uh, how do I communicate with this into the company how mm -hmm. do I do it you know I'm so frustrated and I was getting like I was I was fired for being abrasive and I probably was because uh, I just I couldn't there was no way I could see to make a um, a process to actually deliver any hardware inside that company you know just like Microsoft um, rumor has it that the Xbox division has well over a thousand people working in it. I mean, that's just gives you an idea how right. complicated some of these. Well, what do you, you do know. if you have a conflict? You know, is there someone to take that to? Because if you're all standing equal, I mean, there's no resolution. You just just get mad, I guess. Just get just get mad and bitter. <laughs> I won't help you. <clears throat> no, that was actually part of the problem. I mean, I I saw people around me doing like adding zero value and actually causing negative value by like distracting us so I'm like I'm not gonna work with you I'm gonna do what's in the valve handbook and I'm going to choose not you know roll my desk away and work with other people that are productive and uh, that comes across to uh, you know the higher-ups as abrasive and uncooperative uh. so I was really I mean I I drank the Kool-Aid really hard around there and uh, up until like the last day, I was hopeful that I could turn it around, at least for our project. Um, we had this goal where we developed this really cool piece of tech and we proved that all the pieces were there, that we could have these really cool augmented reality experiences. And so we were rapidly building, building these prototypes. And our goal was like, if we can't just like send an email out into the company and get um, software developers' attention, we're just going to make this portable enough that we can go into the kitchen on one of the catered food days and we're going to plop it down, we're going to make people wear these glasses and they're <laughs> going to look at it and see how cool it is and um, then everything will be great and then uh, mm -hmm. that, that's not how it turned out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sorry Valvers, I know you guys have a great PR machine and I love like 99% of you guys. But <laughs> I was always I mean, surprised there's... that you ended up working for them because you really didn't have a lot of interest in games per se. It just, you know, everyone was all excited. It was Valve, a game maker, and you were kind of like, eh, I just like engineering. I always thought it was interesting that, you know, they had that department that was just kind of like, eh, we're just engineers. We don't, not just, but we're engineers. We don't want to, like, necessarily play games. We just want to do this. I, I think that um, that was kind of a, a trend with many of the, the folks that we were interviewing and and uh, hiring. I don't know what it is about electronics folks, but they're just doesn't seem like they're necessarily as <clears throat> into games, or at least the ones that we were running into. But we all like our group was oh I so miss him so much is um we were so playful. So we were we quickly got into the um concept of making fun game experiences and um we were all maker types. So like if if there was a crazy idea to make some kind of controller, you know, we would work all night and make this controller and be like, hey, it's this wacky <laughs> controller, look how funny it is to play with it, and yeah, maybe that's not the direction we want to go, but we really got behind it, and I, I really got behind AR gaming. Um, at first I thought it was, yeah, I don't think it's all that big of a deal, like who wants, who wants to go sit at a table and play games, you know, I'd but as Dungeons I, and dra dragons. I know. <laughs> well, my background on Dungeons and Dragons, um, maybe I was a little biased because when I was a kid, I wanted to play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends, but they were so mean to me. I would do my character sheet with them, and then we would get together and we'd play the game, and they'd let me die within like, <laughs> a few rolls, and then I'd have to just sit there for hours and hours, like bored out of my mind, waiting for them to recover or That's revive nice. me or whatever. I know. It, was, it, was, it wasn't that popular in school, so that's probably why they did it. My abrasive side again coming out. But, um, but no, at, 
as we started exploring these experiences and we started prototyping them, I'm like, holy crap, AR, augmented reality, is going to be the way that people play board games in the future. It's like, you know, it's a decade from now, it's going to be probably the way every, like, tabletop game is going to be played. And I really got behind it. And so I started working on that, and a whole group of us was working on it. And then some of them got scared off, and so... I was kind of leading the charge of all the augmented reality stuff in there. So there was like the five of us that hmm. um, were, you know, going off this path. And some people were going down VR and some people were doing kind of the safer um, input devices stuff. And How did you manage to wrest the Cast AR from Valve and take it on as your own project? So the day that I got fired, um, I was walking up the or walking up to the elevator and one of the mechanical engineers came out and he said did you hear about so and so got laid off which was the person working on our project and I'm like what the Ew. I'm like mad I'm like what because um, it happens from time to time around valve and um, so I hopped on the elevator and I go upstairs and I'm just like puffed up and I'm like go like into um, our office where all the AR stuff's going on like everyone's head's like hanging down low and Rick looks over to me and he's like I got fired I'm like what the what and he's like you too I'm like what? oh man <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like oh. I can't I can't believe this like in the handbook they say that you know if they think you're too far off course they're just going to pull you to the side and tell you that and like here everyone's getting fired and it was like the weirdest thing. I mean, I've worked on contracts where they've let me go and, and and various things like that where, you know, they just kind of walk you out immediately like you're gone, mm -hmm. right? They they let me, well, they let us like sit in the office all day and my time to get fired didn't come up for like until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <sighs> and I'm just like, I'm boiling at one point. I'm, I'm going through like all the stages of grief or whatever. Yeah, I'm, we're crying like people from in the company are like giving their resignation um, or I mean their their goodbye emails and people are coming by we're hugging and crying and like well I can't believe you're getting laid off too oh my god why and um, so our okay back up our office was the AR office was awesome we had a chandelier we had uh, lava lamps we had <laughs> <black> lights <laughs> We had um, creative inspirations. We had made this portal door to our office that had glowing beads um, hanging down. <laughs> Body scanners, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know. Whenever they did an interview for a potential candidate, they had to take them to the hardware lab. It was like they're so proud of it. And uh, so, first thing, I'm like, I, I was in denial about. It. I'm like, I, they're going to change their mind. They got to change their mind about this. So, but I, I didn't want anyone else in the hardware lab coming through and like just scrapping our prototypes. So I just started grabbing stuff and sticking it in boxes. I'm like, I'm going to put these in boxes. I'm going to put them on the shelf behind things so they don't get destroyed because, you know, maybe something will happen to where we can get these. And so I did that and hit everything. And then I'm like, screw these guys, they can't have any fun with our glow beads and stuff, so we start tearing everything down, like, turned all the lights on, turned all the black lights off, took the chandelier down, took the portal door <laughs> down, went out to the pinball machines and folded them all down so no one could play them. Uh, the joy and leaves with us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it came my time to go um, get the bad news, so I, uh, Gabe delivered it directly to me, so I went up to Gabe, and walked in the door, like, half weepy. Like, I had it pictured in my mind. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to chew him a new asshole. And then I'm halfway up there, my mouth is dry, and, like, and I'm about ready to cry. Walk in the door, I'm like, so this is it, huh? And he's like, yep. And then he tells me, like, you know, we thought you were abrasive, whatever. And then I start chewing on him a little bit, and then I'm like, you should fund this outside the company, or you should just give it to us because you know it's dead and he there's a lawyer in the room and he's like just turned the lawyer and it's like give it to him and I'm like okay alright I'm feeling better and 
so that was that. Um, hmm. It took 